immediately match the Netherlands. <laughs> it must be the code. So, uh, just a little bit of history. We, Lusitania Primary School decided to register to become a Cambridge um, Primary International School in 2018 as part of a strategic plan uh, aimed at improving the overall education at the school. Now, Lusitania has the, the privilege of having a very high academic uh, history in as far as Zimsek is, is concerned. And the teachers are here because that is credit to themselves. We have grown, we are very good at doing well at, at, at Zimsek and we've been doing that for, for over a decade now. So, well done to our teachers for that. Now, as a school, you know, seeking to move forward in education, and um, the vision of the board and of the school is obviously to become a 21st century school, to become a 21st century uh, learning facility that prepares the 21st century learner for an unknown future. And uh, in part, as, as part of that process, uh, we were looking at other curriculums, or I say we, I wasn't at the school at the time, the board and the staff were looking uh, at other curriculums, and Cambridge uh, definitely has a lot of what we want to see in our school. And um, I'm not going to preempt anything that's going to be said later on. Um, I, at this stage, I would like to definitely call on uh, our board member, uh, Mrs. Laura Rudzi, who is part of the Cambridge uh, committee that did some homework and looked into bringing the Cambridge curriculum into the Cetania. And she's going to tell us a little bit more before I introduce our speakers for tonight. Uh, so thank you, Laura. If you could come up and just give us a few words, we'd really like Thank you. Excited to have 
せいでもいたしつなげてるの<笑> Listen,、uh, we, we, uh, I'm excited to have you as you're from Cambridge, and、uh, it's her second time coming to Zimbabwe. And、uh, I think she's going to share with us first, and then we'll be over to Mark. So if you could give Sarah a very big hand. Thank you. Thank you very much, Darren and Laura.、Um, thanks very much, parents and teachers, for giving up your time. I'm a parent myself, and I know that it can be difficult on a winter's evening to, to、um, go out of the house at six o'clock、uh, when you're in for your dinner. So we will keep this brief, but I want to allow time for you to ask any questions you may have as well.、Um, Before I hand over to Sarah,、um, I want to give you just an overview of Cambridge's ethos. It's, it's, these events are d o fairly rarely in Zimbabwe because I would imagine most of you here did、uh, Cambridge qualifications yourselves when you were at school.、Um, when I go to other markets, notably South Africa,、um, parents don't really know what Cambridge is, so I do a lot more of these parents evenings there. So forgive me if I'm preaching and converting in any way,、um, but、uh, I just want to give you a little bit of history of Cambridge. Um, how we started, how we operate, our educational ethos, and then Sarah will talk to you about our、um, teacher and school leader standards, which are the standards by which we judge schools to approve and to offer our qualifications, and they're very fundamental. Daryl said it's very much about 21st century learning,、um, but equally, Laura said it's about 21st century <coughs> parenting, and、um, so I, I hope you will take something away from this this evening. So, Cambridge Assessment International Education, as we're now called, is one of the three non teaching arms of the University of Cambridge. The university itself was founded in 1209, which was the same year that Genghis Khan was invading what is now northwest China, and the first London Bridge was built、um, before it burned down, of course.、Um, and it was not、uh, until 1858 that the first formal assessments. Um, in English schools of SAT. And formal education, as we know it today,、um, was founded really as recently、um, as the 18th century, when people, children went to places of learning in places that became schools, and the system hasn't really changed much from then. Before then, we go back to、uh, you know, prehistoric medieval times, whatever, children learned their trade and skills by hunting, gathering, and doing from their parents. And I think to a certain degree, we have to be careful that education hasn't become a system where we take a child who is born naturally inquisitive and then send them into an education environment for probably 30 years ago, it might be, and we spend that time drumming that、um, intuition out of them to pass、uh, exams and do rote learning tests and get A grades and then go to university and carve themselves out in qualification that in this 21st century we're living is rapidly changing. I don't know what jobs will exist、um, next year,、um, yet alone today.、Um, Cambridge assessment now, from those first few hundred candidates in 1858,、um, now offers、um, uh, assessments to around about 8 million learners in 170 odd countries every year.、Um, and in Sub Saharan Africa、um, uh, last year,、um, we, uh, we had around about <coughs> 50,000 entries in Zimbabwe, around about 55,000 entries,、um, and globally, there are about two and a half million entries now.、Uh, and that's、um, one and a half million of those are scanned for marking online, which equates, I'm told, to around about 25 million A4 images.、Um, and Cambridge Assessment turned over the grand sum of £447 million.、Pounds. So, examinations is a good business. Um, in Sub Saharan Africa, we now have around about 900 schools operating in 23 countries. In Zimbabwe, we have around about 100 schools now actively teaching in Cambridge across the country.、Um, and that is our largest market in, in Sub Saharan Africa. We work very closely with the British Council, and Zimbabwe's entries make up one of the top 10 countries in the world. So, it really is、um, a great legacy that、uh, you and Cambridge have together. And indeed, I probably spend more time here than I actually do in Cape Town. I'm in Zimbabwe about a week in every month, and I shall miss it greatly, even when it's cold.、Right. Um, we've been, Sarah and I have been with the University of Cape Town、uh, the last two days in Bulawayo and Harare. And it's the first time that the University of Cape Town has come to engage with Zimbabwean schools. 
it's not relevant at the moment in primary school, of course, um, but they recognise uh, the value and quality of Zimbabwe and Cambridge learners. So universities are now actively coming to you to encourage your children to apply for places in the university. And that hasn't happened before in any other country, so that's a, a real first as well. And UCAS, which is a central admission system in the UK, the latest research um, shows that 95% of all Cambridge A-level students who were offered places in the UK um, were, were offered places um, in the UK to universities to which they um, applied. And the national average is more like 60% um, for other examination boards. So that, again, I think shows the, uh, the strength of Cambridge. Um, in Zimbabwe, uh, we, uh, what was the University of Cambridge local examination syndicate, so perhaps when some of you were at school, worked closely um, with the Zimbabwe Ministry of Education uh, to benchmark the assessment. So the O and A levels that we did prior to 1988 um, were uh, Cambridge qualifications as we see them today. We still work with ministries of education in many countries, I think notably Singapore, our biggest market, but locally Mauritius, Botswana, Namibia, Swaziland, Lesotho, all use um, what we call localised versions of uh, Cambridge uh, O-levels, GCSEs and A-levels. ZIMSEC, uh, which came around about 2000, uses still Cambridge O and A-levels, but they haven't been developed in the way that our curriculum has been developed. So what that tends to mean with the state of education is that it focuses a lot on the old skills of rote learning less on inquiry-based learning and application of knowledge. But we'll come on to that at the moment. Now, um, just to keep you warm, I've got a question for you from 1858. The first examinations that were sat in the UK to learners of 15 years old. And I've got a question from a thinking skills paper um, for 15-year-olds that was sat last year. Um, so we're going to see what the difference is like around about 160 years in, in, in assessment. So the first question, there is a prize to so anyone can answer this. Um, this was from a geography exam in 1858. Enumerate the countries comprised in the British Empire, mentioning the seat of government in each. Any takers for that? <laughs> no? A couple of problems there. We no longer have our empire. Yeah. Um, we, we, have, um, we have Jeremy Corbyn or Boris Johnson. Take a pick out of those. Um, and here's the, here's the latest question. Um, I have 28 black and 8 brown socks in my sock drawer. If it is completely dark and I cannot see the colour of the socks that I'm picking, how many socks do I need to take from the drawer to be sure that I have at least one pair of socks that are the same colour? Children, when they were newborn, um, or they're just starting to move around the cot, 
is that if the child is trying to reach for a toy, instinctively as parents, you will move the toy within their grasp. If, however, you do not ignore the cry, the child will eventually work out why you have to get the toy. And in this day and age, um, particularly the age I drive in Africa, I rely very much on, on GPS, Google Maps, that map, and end up driving into lakes and fields because you lose the ability to look at the map and actually plan what is north, east, west, south, and know that you're going in a general direction. And I think it's those simple ideas there that if we give children the answers to the problems, they will solve the problems themselves. So we have to give them the rope to get to the answer. Um, as we call them, it's more than a marketing tool, are responsible, confident, reflective, innovative, and engaged. And each one of those can be broken down in a learning process as to how they engage with learning. And that reflects to our school teacher attributes as well, which are the same. So we don't start with exams, we start with curriculum. And we know, and I, I go over the border now, back to South Africa, we know there that um, the majority of students in South Africa now take seven years to complete an undergraduate degree. The majority do. 50% of students in South Africa drop out of the first year of studies, and something like 25% um, never complete their degree at all, even in seven years. So that tends to reflect on the school system in South Africa, which many would say is broken. In fact, at a conference I was most recently, it was described as a circus. The examination has become an end in itself, rather than the knowledge, skills, attitudes and values gained from 12 years of education. Assessment is the tail that wags the curriculum. And I'm afraid to say, as a parent myself, I think we would all admit we are guilty of wanting our children naturally to get good grades at any cost. And it can be um, a risk, I'm afraid, that proper learning, in-depth, fun learning, is put at risk through hard tutoring to get them to learn facts to pass exams. Cambridge assessments are designed to be student-proof and to a degree teacher-proof. Because we examine 100% of the syllabus with linked ideas through, if you don't know that the curriculum uh, the syllabus from A to Z, you will not be able to answer bits in the middle. So students that try and preempt what is coming from the test often fail because they don't have the full and composite knowledge. Now in a primary sense with Cambridge English Maths and Science, and as from next year, art and design using physical education and digital literacy will be added to the curriculum you can offer here at Lusitania. We are encouraging learning through problem solving and inquiry, through practical doing and less teacher talking. Um, and this is, this is giving them the ability to think for themselves, to go and use the, the, the syllabus to apply it practically come up with their own solutions to problems. You can teach a child that 2 plus 2 equals 4. If you ask them, however, by changing the question slightly, 4 is the sum of what, there is an infinite number of answers, all of which are correct. So one way of teaching problem solving might not be known for others. So that's again where teacher skills come very much. And as Darren alluded to, and, and you teachers will know, we've, you've, you've attended Cambridge Professional Development it's an important part of school approval process for Cambridge that schools have a cost of professional development plan for their teachers. This Italian certainly does and has committed heavily to it. And our training now is very much about not teaching. If I go back five years, our training was very much about teaching teachers how to get their students to pass exams. We don't look at that so much now. We look very much about the classroom practice, applying active learning, using assessment as a tool for learning rather than simply for the purpose of achievement in the exam. And at primary, it's not until uh, 16 years old with Cambridge, any assessment at primary level in the formative assessment test, which are called progression test, and the summative assessment, which we call checkpoint, is a diagnostic in nature. It is designed to inform where teaching can be improved and where a learner's strengths and weaknesses lie. So do not, as parents, please, look for a straight A student in your seven, eight, nine year old, whatever it might be. The school is using those results, the teachers are using it to inform how they can better support your children so when they 
reduce it the higher stakes IGCSEs and O levels, they will be in a better position to fall to the rest of the ability. Um, I see that it's very tempting for Cambridge primary schools to list their achievements, but it is, it is not a true measure of their success, and I think it's wrong for us to judge a child at that tender age on how clever or unclever they are, whatever right expression is, when they're at that tender age, and their brain is still developing, and they have no idea about what they're going to do. And more importantly, of course, we have no idea about what job they're going to do, because that job likely will not exist. The OECD um, published only last week a report that says jobs as we know in the next 10 years, 50% will not exist in the form. And there is a danger of um, automation replacing unskilled jobs, which actually is a good thing because it will mean new jobs will be created. But those jobs are not the jobs that we went to school, went to university, whatever it might be, and were upskilled for doing. So, um, Problem solving, inquiry based learning, prediction, practical skills, debating, relevance rather than role learning are not just school skills, but they are life skills and they are critical for success in life, employment, and Cambridge exams. So, parents, if you are expecting lots of homework and red pen and holiday work, um, and you find that this attainer is not giving you so much of that, please see it as a positive. It's much better, I think, as a parent myself, to sit around the dinner table with your children, ask them what they're doing in school, ask them about the state of the world, ask them about Beyonce, ask them about Donald Trump, because they all have an opinion about <coughs> Donald Trump. When they say Donald Trump is a moron, ask them to justify it. And then you get mine. Right. My daughter said Donald Trump's a moron, but when I ask her why, she's a the role of the teacher is fundamental, and I think particularly less so in Zimbabwe, but I've seen a lot of signs saying Cambridge tutoring popping up. I think that is the reflection on the economy. But in South Africa, homeschooling is a real problem. Teachers assume, no, not teachers, parents assume they can buy a textbook and get their child to learn color to color and succeed in an exam. They will not, because the exams are bomb-proof against that approach. Professional teachers are fundamental to the delivery of Cambridge services, and I can't, I, I, I can't sort of undervalue that, and the, the role of the school, not just in the academic, but the whole cultural approach um, that they have towards professional development and support of teachers and your learners is fundamental to whole success. And Mr. Tanya met that to become a Cambridge International School. So, teachers take the written curriculum that we do, the school gives them a group of subjects and syllabuses, and they turn that into the taught curriculum by developing their lesson plans and their approaches to teaching and their learning, and that becomes the learned curriculum, so the three stages. Um, but again, a good teacher is one that teaches you. He talks less and talking too much, and lets the children learn through collaborative approaches, making mistakes. Never be frightened to make mistakes. We all make mistakes. We learn from mistakes. I certainly do as well. So, parents, allow the school to do their job. Allow the teachers to do their job. They are professionals in their trade as much as you are in whatever trade you do. It is not possible to teach successfully by learning the technique. So, trust the school. Relax about homework. <coughs> I have. My life is much easier, and there's fewer arguments at home than has to come. It's homework. Um, and they know the best approaches to help. Kipling said, I keep six honest serving men, they taught me all I knew. Their names are what and why and when and how and where and who. Those key open questions are the key to learning and success. Right, there will be time for questions. I'm going to hand over to Sarah Turner now, who's going to talk about teacher standards how these applies, and she is the lady that designed them. So she knows what she's talking about, and she's a very highly qualified teacher. So. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for having me, and then short notice. So I don't want to steal too much of Mark's thunder, it's just I need to earn the dinner that he's about to take me out for, so um, <laughs> I, I need to talk a little bit to earn that. Um, so my role within Cambridge, so I was a teacher two and a half years ago, I was still in the classroom, I'm an English teacher by trade, 
Um, and I've been with Cambridge since then. But my role is very much to design the professional development and help to deliver the professional development that supports the teachers who are then delivering the, the Cambridge qualifications. And you can imagine, can't you, what it must be like, particularly I was in teaching for 15 years, so teaching changed quite a lot actually over that period. It moves quite quickly. And so what we need to be able to do as Cambridge is support you in your journey to moving towards this new style of teaching. Um, and this new style of learning, because it's all about teaching and learning, and how those things go hand in hand. So Mark's already mentioned things like active learning, assessment for learning. Something that's becoming key now is metacognition. This is thinking about thinking, allowing your children to understand how they learn and how they think about things. Um, and it was brought home to me, I'm not just a teacher, but also a parent myself, and it was brought home to me when my 14-year-old came home and said, I need to revise. Because I said, well, okay, what have your teachers talked to you about in terms of how you revise? What, what, what are you going to do? It's nothing. <laughs> okay, so we, we, we'll have a think about it, and let's try different approaches. And it's that sort of experimentation within boundaries in the classroom that's a bit of a leap of faith for teachers, but Cambridge kind of will support you in the professional development that's offered and will support the teachers so that they can move forward with your confidence um, in the classroom. Um, and it's, it's really important that they feel that everybody's on side, that you understand what it is your children are doing in the classroom, because you'll get different reports. It will sound different, what they're doing and how they're doing it and how they're going about their learning. But as Mark, Mark said, trust in the teachers, trust in what the school are doing, um, and you'll see wonderful things. It's, it's a slightly terrifying world for our children today, but exciting nonetheless. Um, so, welcome to Cambridge. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
Thank you for your presentation. Um, I heard you mention that in South Africa, they have said that um, the system of education is broken. I would want to understand what is your perception, what is your personal assessment of the schooling system in Zimbabwe? And if there are any shortcomings, how does Cambridge move in to close those gaps or shortcomings? Yeah, um, I think South Africa is generally accepted that the system of education is broken because, um, and it's not just South Africa, we saw it in the UK as well, um, governments like to be judged on success. Success for them is the number of students accessing higher education and passing exams. The way to get that is not by lowering the bar to such an extent that in South Africa 30% means colours. <coughs> and where a question in mass literacy is how many colours there are on the South African flag, it's not a very good assessment of a seven-year-old's ability to do mathematics. Um, but Zimbabwe has a, 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 you know, a very, very strong reputation for good education, always has, and it certainly still is now. Um, 
I think uh, increasingly it's my job, but it's always been my job to assess schools of what's what for Cambridge. With the economy over the last few years, I'm increasingly seeing applications from low fee paying schools um, who have not got the, um, the ability to send their teachers to professional development training. Now, if you've got a teacher who's been teaching the old way, by talking back to the class, writing things on the, on the whiteboard, um, chalkboard, students are copying it down and then learning it in a, a test on a Friday verbatim. Um, that's actually not going to help deliver uh, a 21st century curriculum that we invest the substantial amount of money we make back into creating new subjects and making them more fun. Um, so if there were one thing I think needs to be improved in, in education in Zimbabwe is teacher training. And funnily enough, tomorrow morning Sarah and I are meeting with the minister who is very keen from conversations we've started in rolling out across government schools Cambridge professional development qualifications which give teachers a grounding in active learning and using assessments as a tool for learning and a general broad teaching skills as is needed in the 21st century classroom. So that's going to be an interesting conversation. It, it's fantastic they're keen to do it because the South Africans don't want to even talk about it. Thank you. 
what are things we can, how can I improve from this? It was such a basic thing. They couldn't even pick, you know, we had the bin right there, you know, things were placed randomly. This is your space, this is your office. If I'm to take you, how would you improve from this? They couldn't even see it. So, as an employer, they had, some had five A's, some had three A's. This one had C strength, mm -hmm. but she was the best in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, I've got burning questions in my heart now from all those that you've uh, brought up, but um, we are out of time. We did promise to stick to the 7 p.m. Not only because you've got to get home to your children so they can, they can come to school uh, bright and fresh tomorrow, but because our uh, guests have to get to a, a prior uh, another appointment. So we are very grateful. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you very much. Wow.